Can you see how the combined gas law is just that? There's boils. There's Charles. And there's Guy Lussac's. Right? They're all there, just smushed together. Okay, so this one is called the combined gas law. So if we know this one, we automatically know all the other three. Okay, we, we automatically know all the others. This one should go on your little equation sheet that you started last class. Jack, what do I like my pressure units to be? What do I like the units for pressure to be? Mm. Good. Pressure should be atmospheres. Good. James, what do I like my my um, temperature unit to be in? Mm. Celsius first, then we convert to what? Perfect. Kelvin. Okay, good. And Nathan, what do I like my volume units to be in typically? Liters. Very good. Okay, that's what I prefer. What's the one of those that is a must convert? No matter what, what's it? Which one is it? Celsius to Kelvin. Celsius to Kelvin is a must convert. What's my kind of rule for the other ones? Do I have to convert pressure all the time necessarily? No. Not always. What's, what, when is it a, a situation in which I don't have to convert? James, what is it? When they're the same. Bingo. When they're the same on both sides, we can keep them. Okay, because here, let me, let me give you a little reason behind that. A pressure conversion is always a multiplication or a division. But a, a addition convert, I'm sorry, a, a temperature conversion is an addition, right? I add 273. So if I have pressure in PSI and PSI, if I want to convert to atmospheres, I have to divide by 14.7. Divide by 14.7. So I'm just doing the same multiplication or division on both sides of my equation, which means it doesn't make a difference. But the addition part of it is really important. So that is that has to be done. Okay, so we don't have to do the pressure or volume necessarily as long as they are the same on both sides. So let's go ahead and try one here. Okay, it says... <clears throat> A child a child has a toy balloon with a volume of 1.8 liters. The temperature of the balloon when it was filled was 200 degrees Celsius and the pressure was one atmosphere. So do we have some of our beginning variables right there? Let's go ahead and start listing out what we know. We need, to, we need to take account of those numbers and really write out what we know. Okay, so it says my volume was 1.8. So is that V1 or V2? V1. Okay, so V1 is equal to 1.8 liters. The temperature was 200 degrees Celsius. So T, sorry, T1 is, can I leave it at 200? No, because it's in Celsius, so it's going to actually be what in Kelvin? Oh, I'm sorry. Is that making it a little degrees? Is, did it make my degrees a zero? So sorry. Okay, thank you for pointing that out. This on yours says 20 degrees Celsius. That's my fault. It just took my degrees and made it a zero in this PowerPoint. I don't know why. So let's change that. How about 20 degrees Celsius? What's my temperature in Kelvin? 293. So 293 Kelvin. And then my pressure was one atmosphere. So P1 is equal to one atmosphere. Okay. What about my after variables? It says if the child were to let go of the balloon and it rose three kilometers into the sky where the pressure is 0.667 atmospheres. So that would be P2. 0.667. And the temperature is, is that supposed to be negative 10? Yeah. Sorry, negative 10 degrees Celsius. So that would make T2 what value in Kelvin? 263. 263. 263. We would take negative 10 plus 273 and we get 263 Kelvin. Okay, so 2. 
63 Kelvin. What would the new volume of the balloon be? That's going to be our question mark. Now, let me ask this question. Does this statement matter? If the child were to let go of the balloon and it rose three kilometers, no. does that make a difference to us? Not at all, right? Sometimes we see numbers in our problem and we automatically assume we're going to use them, but we're not going to use that three kilometers anywhere. Okay, so we can, we can cross that out or get rid of it, whatever you want to do there. But let's go ahead and start setting this up into the combined gas law. Okay, the combined gas law says that it is P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. So let's put our numbers into that. Is that is that green okay to see or is it hard for you to see? Is it okay? All right, so P1 is one atmosphere times V1 is 1.8 liters over 293 Kelvin. All of that is equal to 0.667 atmospheres times V2 over 263 Kelvin. Okay, so now our algebra looks a little bit tricky, doesn't it? Because we've got things happening on both sides. It is actually still truly just a cross multiply and divide. Okay, but it's just a little bit of an extra step. So here's what I'm going to recommend that you do. Okay, I'm going to recommend that we do this. Let's go ahead and do the math for this whole side. Okay, let's do the math for that whole side. So let's take 1 times 1 1.8 divided by 293. That gives me 0 0.00614. Okay, 1 1.8 divided by 293 gives me that number. Do we agree? Okay, that is equal to 0 0.667 times V2 over 3, sorry, over 263. And so now it comes back to just be a little bit of a simpler cross multiply and divide, right? If we say that's over 1, this comes back to be truly just cross multiply and divide. Okay, so the, I, we did it in, a, in one maybe extra step, um, but we're still going to cross multiply and divide there. So times 263 divided by 0.667. Okay, and that gives me V2 equal to 2.42. And what would my units be here if I'm solving for volume? Liters. Liters. Okay. Any questions on the algebra with that? If you don't want to do the extra step of this side first, you could still just cross multiply, divide, and then we divide the other side as well. So we could do it all kind of in one fell swoop if you want to. But if it makes more sense for you to do, just go ahead and do that side. You can, whatever is more comfortable for you. Okay. So it's kind of like cross multiply, divide, divide. Let me give you one more piece um, kind of of advice here. On these problems, we're, it's a little bit more difficult to predict. Is the volume going to go up or the volume going to go down? With our Boyle's Law, Charles Law, and Guy-Lussac's Law, we were able to make a prediction, knowing that if pressure went up, volume was going to go up or whatever it might be. Um, so this one is a little bit more difficult to predict. I'll just give you that kind of heads up is that you might you might not be able to make a guess as to where it is so we just got to trust our our math right there okay tell me what questions we have without yeah go ahead Hannah. no no that's a great question we, we wouldn't be able to do it if two of them were missing yeah good question okay let's try the next one here it says a gas sample occupies 3.25 liters. So what is that variable? Volume. Good. And do you think it's our initial or our final? Initial. So V1 is 3.25 liters at 24.5 degrees Celsius. So T1 is not 24.5, but... Thank you, 297.5 Kelvin. 
and 1825 MMHG. Do you remember what that what that stands for? Millimeters. Millimeters of what element? Do you remember? Mercury. Mercury. Good. Everybody looked up here. Good. Millimeters of mercury. And so that is a pressure unit, isn't it? It's a pressure unit. So let's just go ahead and write that down as P1. It's 1825 millimeters of mercury. It says determine the temperature. So that means we're solving for T2 at which the gas will occupy 4,250 milliliters and a pressure of 1.5 atmospheres. So do we see any red flags coming up here? Say it again. Good, okay, so we've got a little bit of an issue here with our units for volume. This one is milliliters and this one is liters. Yeah, does it matter which one we convert to? It, it really doesn't, as long as they're the same. So let's go ahead and just take this one to liters. Do you remember that conversion? Milliliters to liters, right? It's a thousand, so we'll divide that by a thousand. So 4.25 liters. 4.25 liters. Are we comfortable with that conversion? Okay, do we see anything else that is a problem? Which one? The, the pressure, right. So we've got both millimeters of mercury and atmosphere. So which would we probably prefer? Atmosphere. Probably atmosphere. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of millimeters of mercury and go to atmosphere. So this one, you might have to check on your equation sheet how many millimeters of mercury are in one atmosphere, so we can convert. One atmosphere is how many? 760, good. So 1825 divided by 760 gives me 2.40 atmosphere. So I've done a lot of work and I really haven't even started my problem yet, right? We just had to get all of our units to the same spot, okay? So now let's go ahead and plug it into our combined gas law. So um, P1 times V1 over T1 equals P2 times V2 over T2. We don't know that, right? That's our question mark. So now that we're set up and, and we've got our variable right here by itself, we can kind of do a true cross multiply and divide, right? This would be multiply by everything there and divide by everything here. All right, so in my calculator, this is what I would do. Are we ready to plug things in our calculator? If it were me, I would take 297.5 times... 1.5 times 4.25, and I would hit enter. I'm done with the multiplication part. And then we're gonna divide by this whole term right here, but I, I'm just gonna put it in my calculator. Divide by 2.4, and then again, divide by 3.25. And I get a temperature equal to 243.5. One. All right, and my units for that temperature would be Kelvin. Yeah.